Now, let's talk a little history. The first person to try, try to connect the forces to the motion was Aristotle. And this is a bad pixel date for him. But Aristotle did some uh, experiments where he started stuff off and he found that it always stopped. Just every single time. He just kept doing these experiments and he just kept stopping. And that led him to postulate or, or suggest that stopped is the natural state of things. That here on earth things just want to be stopped. Now of course the heavenly bodies, they do different things because they're heavenly and they got different rules. But that was his his take on things. Now, given that view, I would ask you, what's the velocity of this room? Well, relative to the sub, it's not moving, Greg. Right. But what if we do it relative to an alien that's just kind of hovering in a spacecraft above the North Pole? That alien would see the Earth going around once every 24 hours. And we would be going around with the Earth. And since everything's going towards Boston, and Boston's that way, this whole room is going that way. And we can figure out how fast it's going by taking the distance it travels, 2 pi r, and dividing by the time it takes to go once around 24 hours. And that will give us about 400 meters per second. Now, folks, that's 900 miles an hour. We are going that way 900 miles an hour. Now, folks, if the natural state of things is stopped, I would ask you, if I jump up, why doesn't that whiteboard just smack me in the back of the head 900 miles an hour? And some of you after that last exam are saying, yeah, why not? <laughs> That's the demo I pay money to see. <laughs> yeah. And the answer is, I'm also moving 900 miles an hour. That way. And I want to keep moving that way whether I jump up or stay on the ground. Now the first person that suggested that was our old friend Galileo. The genius of the thought experiment. Now, Galileo did the same experiments that, that uh, Aristotle did, but more carefully, he listened. Everyone listen. Did you hear the scraping? The scraping that goes on there? Well, Galileo suggested, maybe if I polish that book and polish that table to a nice, smooth surface, maybe if I start it the same, it'll go further. Now you remember Galileo was famous for, for pushing things to extremes. And so he said, what if I could make them perfectly smooth? What if I could get rid of all of the scraping, all of the friction? Would it stop at all? Well, he argued that the smoother he got it, the further it would go. And then he argued, if it's perfectly smooth, it's got to keep going forever. Now. Galileo could not get them perfectly smooth, and he had a disadvantage, uh, and that is that he did not have a Smith's. I went down to Smith's this morning, and I got a block of dry ice. Now, does anyone know why we call this dry ice instead of wet ice? Because it's ice. What's that? It sublimates. It sublimates. Okay, if you put it on your desk, it doesn't make a puddle. It goes straight into a gas. Does anyone have a quarter? Anyone? I got one. All right. Anyone got twenty dollars? <laughs> <laughs> I got two questions. Why does the quarter scream and why does it stop? Talk to your neighbor. Why does it scream and why does it stop?
Okay, why does it scream? Raise your hand. Because it's um, the quarter is becoming cold at a very, very, very fast rate. Okay, so the quarter is becoming cold, and at the same time, the quarter is doing what to the ice? It's melting it, but with dry ice, it sublimates into gas. And how does that gas get around the quarter? It has to escape, and it makes the quarter wiggle back and forth as it's escaping. Escaping gas has been a social problem for years. <laughs> now, why does it stop screaming? Yeah, at, at some point it becomes the same temperature, does it not, as the dry ice. And then it no longer turns the dry ice into gas. Now the fact that this dry ice turns into gas allows me to get rid of friction. If I put it on a piece of slate, it turns out that it it warms this dry ice so quickly that it creates a layer of gas underneath the ice. Now listen for the scraping sound. Did you hear any scraping? No. Now, we are a poor school. I had to get this out of an elementary school here in town. <laughs> if we were a rich school like Harvard, we would have a piece of slate three miles long, perfectly level. And I would get this thing going, and what would happen? It would just keep on going for three miles, constant velocity. It would be cool. It would be worth the tuition. <laughs> okay. Uh, now, we're going to do something with that in just a moment. But right now, let's finish our story about Galileo. He did not have dry ice, but he had an incredibly great brain. And he used that great brain to figure out the answer we just observed. He used what we learned in the first tutorial and said that a ball going down a ramp has acceleration down the ramp. And the steeper the ramp, the bigger the acceleration. As I make that ramp shallower, the magnitude of the acceleration gets smaller. And then he jumped clear across to where the ball was going up the ramp. Now you've been to that first tutorial. What direction is the acceleration? Down the ramp. Now this is what Galileo did. He took these two cases here, and he made those two ramps more and more and more shallow until they met at level. Now the more shallow he got this one, the smaller that arrow to the right became. The more shallow we got that one, the smaller this arrow to the left became. The only thing that he could figure out that it must be when they met in the middle was zero. And he knew what zero acceleration meant. He said it this way, an object of rest stays at rest. An object in motion stays in motion at constant speed in a straight line unless acted upon by a net force. So he, without the benefit of dry ice, said this thing's just going to keep on going forever. At constant speed in a straight line, meaning constant velocity, meaning zero acceleration. 